Welcome to Arise Life, a community of believers being equipped, empowered, and released into their destiny. For more information, go to arisealife.org or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. I'm not going to ask you who, who this is. There is stuff in the water right now that is saying everything is going to fall to pieces very shortly, and you need to get ready and buy yourself a hole in the ground, buy enough food to last you till Jesus comes back. And that is a lie from the pit of hell. Don't make me beat that out of you because I will. God is not an author of fear. He is not an author of fear. He is not an author of fear. Hear me in this. Do fear masquerades as wisdom, but it robs you of everything God has for you. I will beat you. (laughs) Let me give you the story in the Old Testament. The city of Israel is surrounded by by the Arameans, the largest army in the area. They are there to beat them up. And, they do, and the Israelites deserve it. Anybody here, you're in difficult straits, but because you deserve it, well, we'll just die. You heard her testimony. They did the stuff. They, pay, they got into debt. It was on them. But Jesus didn't die for your accidents. He died for what you did on purpose. He paid a price for what you did on purpose. Do you guys know this about the Old Testament? There's no sacrifice under the Old Covenant for, for per, intentional sin. All those sacrifices are for accidental sin. I don't know about you. I don't have a lot of those. <laughs> Most of mine have been on purpose, right? Jesus, and so in the Israelites, they're, they're being attacked by an enemy they deserve to be beaten by. It's gotten so bad that they are becoming cannibals, And there's three lepers outside the gate. And they go, well, we die here, we die there. Hey, who knows? Maybe they'll put us out of our misery first. So they go and looking for the enemy. All the people are starving in the city, afraid to leave the city, full of fear. These idiots go looking for the enemy. (laughs) Do you know what they find? God had routed the enemy in the night and left all their goods. And they're sitting there having a party all by themselves, the three of them. And they're like, I kind of feel bad. Should we let the cannibals in the city know they don't need to eat each other anymore? We need to be those people who don't hide within the walls, but go out and despoil the enemy. So listen, the Peter says, when they ask you for the reason for the hope that you have, have you got it? Because your hope better not be in a hole in the ground. They trust in horses and chariots, but we trust in the Lord. I'm going to say this. There are some of you all that you've begun to pivot already uh, with businesses into a fear-based economy. And God's saying, what's she doing? You remember the talents? There was one guy who buried the talent in the ground. That would be that. Okay, if you won't listen to me, listen to Warren Buffett. He said, when everybody's afraid, that's when you, you advance. Oh, war, you like Warren Buffett better than Jesus? Okay, all right, I see how y'all. Well, Jesus, I don't know about him. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He's pretty wealthy. You should deal with it. All right. All right, there's a reason why this is empty. Um, I took out the first row already. They laid out. All right, Jesus, 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 Jesus. <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, all right, no, another freebie, another freebie. Uh, as we were in worship, I was praying and I saw this thing. Many of us, our minds are such a mess of tangled thoughts and confusion and despair. And what I saw, it wasn't like a tangle. It was like a mat. Anybody here had a mat in your hair or a mat in somebody else, in a child's hair or in a dog's hair? If you know anything about a mat, when you try to brush through it, what happens? It gets tighter and there's screaming and gnashing of teeth. True? Why do you hate me? Right? So what you do is you start to avoid the mat. 
What happens if you avoid a map? It grows. Anybody's like, I can testify, right? What I saw was God was saying, uh, let me pour oil upon your hair, on your thoughts, on your mind. Let me pour the oil of my presence. And then he said, let me brush through it. And what the immediate soul reaction was, no, it's going to hurt. He said, trust me, my oil is better. And, and the lie is that we have to untangle each and every little tangle. No. He will brush through and straighten out. So as we sit in his presence today, if you have tangled thoughts, just lay them down in front of him. Say, Jesus, I can't. I trust you to do the work with the, with the oil of your presence. Even already in worship, he's been doing it. Just let him keep doing it. Oh, gosh. All right. There we go. All right. All right. So we've been going through. Okay, okay, Mike and I will go off and we'll work on Colossians. You guys can be wherever the heck you want. The last bit we've been going through. If you don't know by this one, I don't know where you've been. Like, you've had many options. Anywhere. All right, we've been doing it for a while, as evidenced by the fact we're on number 14. Colossians chapter 3. As Mike said, we're get the end is in sight. All right, chapter 3. And so let's, we're going to do about three or four verses today. We're going to do, I think, four through seven, 14 through 17. Verse 14, beyond all these things. Now, how would I know what all these things are? Back. Read backward. Before, beyond. See? Guys, you might laugh. I know I'm being silly, but the reality is every time we act like we're spiritual, we cut ourselves off from asking good, childlike questions that get really good answers. Beyond all these things, what would, what would those things be? Well, let's look back. Verse, mm, 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 mm. where do we go to? Back to 12. They did 12. It said, beyond all these things, so these things are so, though as those who've been chosen of God, you were chosen of God because you were so awesome, right? You were chosen of God because you are beloved of God. He loves you. He chose you because he made you. He designed you. He knows your value. He knows your worth. And nothing you can do can change that. If I take a diamond and I bury it in a pile of manure, how much is that diamond worth? It's the same. It's the same. It's It's still a diamond. Your value is not determined by the stuff other people or yourself has put on it. What can, listen, you can't cut a diamond with manure. You can't mar a diamond. Your value cannot be marred by this world. The lie of the enemy is, it's too late for you. You're too screwed up. Lie from the pit of hell. That's not true. You cannot change the fundamental nature of who he has made you to be. Even if you be deluded, he never is. Because you are holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion Kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. So all of these are other giving. Listen, apart from God, who are we focused on in this life? It's all about me. Right? Right? It's all. I Listen, listen. I will care about you when I'm taken care of. Right? You need to meet my needs. Anybody seen a really bad marriage? It's two people fighting to get the other person to meet their needs. Say law. <laughs> People are like, oh, I thought that was normal. <laughs> it is normal yeah. apart from Jesus. Were you planning to be apart from him? No. I wouldn't recommend it. Bearing with one another. Why do we have to bear with one another? Because sometimes we are covered in manure. Anybody know any? No, don't nudge. Yeah, right? I mean, anybody know anybody who this week has not looked like who God says they are? Bearing with means I know who you are even if you forgot. Bearing with another and forgiving each other, whoever has a complaint. Whoever. Well, first of all, why do you have to forgive people? Because it's safer that way. It's safer that way. Well, what makes you have stuff to forgive? Wrongdoing. Offense, wrongdoing. That's it? Huh? Stupidity. Stupidity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a bazillion reasons to forgive each other, right? Yeah. Some of you are like, I'm already up to 100 this morning alone, right? And that was just the drive here. 
forgiving each other, forgiving whoever, whoever is pretty all-inclusive, right? Yeah. I said this last week, anybody like to make little exceptions? Yeah. So, and remember what Peter said when he said, Jesus, I'm feeling super spiritual. Should I, if I, my brother has sinned against me and I forgave him like seven times, I'm done, right? And what did Jesus say? Seven times seven. Time seven. <laughs> like, I can't do that kind of math. <laughs> and people are like, I've worked up to 490 with my spouse this week. Right? No, that's not, he's not fighting 490. He's saying there's no limit. Whoever. Just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. So beyond all of these things, these things seem pretty amazing. Beyond all these things, do what? Put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. Well, sometimes if you're wrestling with a passage, you want to see it maybe in another way. You don't really understand what's going on. You can break out another translation. And Masha's been digging into something here. Yeah, come on. Okay, those who know me know that I'm super visual, so I'm going to use the whiteboard. Is that okay? Yeah, we're going to draw my usual diagram, and we're going to kind of put things, you know, what goes where. I can open this. <laughs> you help me. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do, um, he talks about heaven and earth, right? And earth. Okay, so who is in heaven? Yeah, Jesus. And it says that we're, see, uh, we're in, seated where? In heavenly places. In whom? In Jesus. Right? So we are here. I'm not going to turn it on because I'm back here. <laughs> we can hear you. <laughs> We're going to have a special guest here in a minute. <laughs> He's getting dressed up. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> we can still hear you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so we're seated in Jesus. Um, and what, what is in heaven? Just give me a couple things that are in heaven. Okay, so peace, joy, love, unity, health, fun, all of the stuff that they listed, right, that we're supposed to put on are here, right? What are the things that are down here? Suffering. Um, <laughs> um, um, you know, where's, where's the enemy? Where's Satan? Down in this realm, right? Satan. Um, so everything that has to do with sin, right? Everything that the passage describes that we're supposed to put off, correct? So what are some of those things that, men, that were mentioned in the passage? Who remembers? Or you can... You can cheat and look. <laughs> so like jealousy, uh, jealousy, bitterness, bitterness, anger. So it, we talked the last couple of weeks that it doesn't just go, this passage doesn't just go after behaviors, right? It goes after the internal stuff, right? Because I feel like in religion, like a lot of times we're like, well, we can't really deal with this. At least we will project the behavior, right? It doesn't matter that I'm, like, dying from anxiety and spiraling out of control, but at least I'm, like, you know, morally good, whatever, right? So, but Jesus goes, and Paul in this passage goes after everything, right? He doesn't just go after behavior, you know, like sexual immorality and all of that stuff, but he goes after bitterness and jealousy and, like, all the good stuff that are just mind precious, right? That no one necessarily gets to see unless, until I start manifesting, right? <laughs> and biting people <laughs> and slandering and be, getting offended and kind of going down, right? So, but what Paul is talking about that all of this stuff stays here, 
right? So we're supposed to take it off. All right, so you guys know that I'm from Siberia, right? So we have a special guest from Siberia this morning. Seriously, you know it's so, very cold. Are you comfortable in this? Of course not. <laughs> But I would die without it. Well, what, what, you, I, what is wrong with you? You 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 look happy, <laughs> and you're you're going to die. Cold. No, it's warm here. You're in Georgia now, so you have to adjust your wardrobe. What? So How? It, it means um, some things have to come no, off. No, no, no! Don't touch my hat. <laughs> It's after you die if you take off hat. Russians, you know this. <laughs> you don't wear hat after first of September. Mm, bad things happen. It's very, so, it's very serious. Very serious. But, um, but I don't understand. Why are you not wearing a hat? Um, because it is so much warmer here in Georgia, and you have to you have to put off some things and leave them here in but, Siberia but these keep me to be safe. comfortable in Georgia. But these things keep me safe. I think let's let's try and see if you're going to be okay. Maybe. Take off your hat. I don't I have this too far. Okay. Maybe we take coat. off the coat. Okay, let's Maybe do we coat. take off the coat. All right. Do coat. <laughs> <laughs> see? It feels weird. You're better. I think you're better. Okay, try the It scarf. It does feel a little nicer, I have to admit. <laughs> scarf. Okay. <sighs> It's not too bad. <laughs> It still seems a little risky though. All right. Well, let's try for the last one. But if I don't have this, how will I stay warm? I think the sun is going to be uh, is going to warm you. You're going to be okay. I don't have to warm yeah. myself? You don't have to warm oh, yourself. Okay. I'm going to okay. try. It. See. See how <gasps> it works. Yes. Oh. <laughs> It's so much lighter. It's so much I'm not better. Sweating. Hey, but guess what? What? Here you need a different kind of hat. I do? You do. And oh. some sunglasses. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, it is bright. <laughs> oh, oh, the world looks so much better. It looks so much better when I see things from his perspective. Things look you look better when I see you with his perspective. Amen. You look good. You no offense, you don't normally good look good, but you look a whole lot better from his perspective. Come on, so you can still you can still wear your parka and your your hat here, but you're going to be massively uncomfortable. If you want to hold on to your bitterness and unforgiveness and judgment, you can. Come on, come on. But you are not going to have fun. I I love how some people have put it. They've said you used to be a professional sinner. Now you're just a pathetic amateur. <laughs> Now you're a professional saint. Come on. It says you because you are holy and beloved, you get you get to put on all of that stuff. Not because you have to perform to be holy and beloved. You already because of what Jesus has done, he has transported you into himself and seated you in heavenly places. You're already holy and beloved. Your whole nature has changed. And guess what, y'all? Oh, my word, I love that verse where he goes after cultures. Ooh. Who has cultural excuses? Yeah, that's just how we are in my yeah. family. That's what we do. He goes, in this new creation life, Your nationality makes no difference. Or your ethnicity, education, or economic status. They matter nothing. For it is Christ that means everything as he lives in every one of us. Wow. What? Are you saying I can't play my Russian card and be mean to you? <laughs> We have a cold front culture. 
Very cold. Very cold. That's why we wear shopki. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Big hats. <laughs> Come on. But see, in some of you, it says like, well, that, what does it make a difference that I'm seated with him? When your plug of your lamp is seated in the socket, what happens? Light and warmth flows through that wire. When you are plugged into him, you live out of his strength, his life, better yet, his emotion. Who here has been a victim of your own emotions and therefore decided to help other people experience your emotions too? <laughs> I'm having a bad day, so I would like to invite you on an all expense tour of hell. Mm -hmm. Wow. So can I, can, I, can I be like super straight with you all? Yeah. Okay. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> so if I want all of this stuff, if I want to hold on to offense, if I want to hold on to unforgiveness, I can but it puts me into this realm. And who is in this realm? Remember that passage about the unforgiven servant? It says that if you don't forgive this, you know, you're going to be thrown into the pit where um, the, the tormentors, the torturers are going to have access to you. Anybody been there at 3 a.m. holding the court of your mind against somebody? Four of us? Mm -hmm. Five, six, I see that. That is the torturer mm -hmm. because they're sleeping like babies. <laughs> they don't even show up for their court date. Yeah. So unfor all of that stuff just torments us. And here is the part that really, really stinks. <sighs> don't say it. That we cannot want mercy for ourselves and justice for someone else. <gasps> what? Doesn't it stink so bad? <laughs> Okay, guys. If we want justice, we will get justice, but it will be down here. And where, where, what, what do we deserve in justice without Jesus, without the sacrament? What does the Bible say? What kind of punishment? Death. Yeah. So, you can have your justice. <laughs> it's hard, right? But it's true. Come on. You can release them into Jesus' hands and let him deal with them. Not like... <laughs> uh, can, can I kill a sacred cow? Yeah. Half of you are like, yes. The other half were scared. Um, I'm scared. Here, here's what it is. <laughs> Some of you have been taught this. Get, forgive them, surrender them to God, and God will get justice for you. And what we mean by justice is... No, I've watched that. I've heard people, and they're like, I have forgiven him, but God's going to get him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't look crazy at all. No. no. Do you want to know what true justice is? Is to return a thing or a person to its original intended mm -hmm. design. Mm -hmm. So you know what that means to pray for the person you want justice on? Is to pray that they become who God made them to be. Uh. But, but who's going to pay for their crimes? Now, some of you, uh, listen, I'm going to tell you, no offense, I can see there are several of you who are white knuckled even when I said that. But I need to just push a little harder and say, how is it working out for you? Demanding justice. It hasn't gotten you anything so far and it won't get you anything in the end. And I know that if, if in a room this size, the things that have happened to you are horrible. Horrific. I mean, just statistically. Horrific. There's been horrible, bad things that have been abuse are done <sighs> but you'll stay here until you release that's the truth and and let me tell you this and just to add a little sugar to all of this <laughs> when not salt sugar <laughs> and not lemon juice sugar our unforgiveness only enslaves us it doesn't enslave them. They're sleeping like babies when they shouldn't. In fact, would you believe this? Your unforgiveness is allowing them to stay where they're at 
unaware of the immensity of what they did. It's actually unforgiveness keeps them in that place. If you want them to understand the magnitude of what they did, come to their senses and repent. That's only possible if you release them. I'm not saying to their face. Don't, don't get it wrong. And I'm not saying make yourself vulnerable to dangerous people. I'm not saying that. Use some wisdom, people. You, get, you were given legs for a reason. Run. If you are, let me, I'll put the little asterisk. If you're in a physically or emotionally abusive relationship, go. Run. Boundaries are healthy. But if you've let, many of you have left those situations and you're still enslaved there in your heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I said it last week, I got really good news because some of you are going, I can't forgive. Yes, you are absolutely correct. You and I are utterly unable to forgive. Why? Because God wired us that way. It's something only he can do in and through us. And so we cry out, I believe, help my unbelief. I'm unable, help me, do it. I... I'm going to, but do you know you do that every single time you walk into a dark room? It's dark. I need light. Oh God, let there be light. Click. Do you realize that's all our crying out to God? Mm -hmm. God, I want to forgive. Click. Letting his power Mm -hmm. do the work for us. Come on. Trusting that he will do the work in us. (sighs) All right. So we said this beyond all these things, put on love. That's the work. That's the hard work. Put on love. He didn't say, make love happen. I'm loving you. He said, put it on. How hard is it to put it on? It's that easy. It's as easy as flipping a switch. It's saying, God, because it's not my love in the first place. See, if I'm asking it to be my love, it's going to be a work and it's going to smell like doo-doo. But if it's his work... God, I can't love. Love through me. God, love. I put on love. And then he says this. He said, to which indeed you were called to rule in your heart. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead. It is the perfect bond of unity. You and I can't be one apart from his love flowing in and through us. But you know, it's so important. And I feel like we haven't even scratched the surface of what it looks like supernaturally and where Jesus is taking us as the body, as the church, Right into this place of such unity and love, right? That's what, that was his last prayer before he was crucified, was for his church to be one as he and Father are one. What? And, and we said this before, the unity of the world, the world is a unity either of domination or similarity. Mm-hmm. We are alike because we are similar. The, uh, the unity of the body is a unity of connection and choice, not a unity. It's a unity of diversity. Yes, it is. Come on, it's yeah. a unity of diversity. And so the Father does not become, the, become identical to the Father to be one with the Father. So son is, yeah, I can't even do it. Son is not, does not cease being the Son when he is unified with the Father. Mm-hmm. Our, we are not dominated and controlled in unity. It is a unity where we both get to show up. That is only possible supernaturally. It's not possible in this world. And that's why he says, he says that's the only one. And that's, that is especially true at the lowest level, which is the level of the human relationship of one-to-one. Whether husband and wife, friends, which parents and ch- children. Directly goes after husbands and wives. In, in a minute. I don't know. Are we but gonna I don't, go? We're not going to get, I, 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 yeah, I can't no. handle it. We're, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. But we got to <laughs> unpack some stuff first and I, we don't want to mess you up. All right. So he says then, if you've, if you've put on love, then verse 15, let peace, mm-hmm. the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Okay. What does the word let mean? Allow. 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 Give permission Give to. Permission to. How hard is it to give permission? Let. Let. It's just, that's it. Let. Give up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Suck it up, little camper, and give up. Let peace rule in your heart. Mm-hmm. Let yeah. peace. Now, here's the problem. Anybody here, you've been in turmoil? And, and I've said this before. If you've ever tried to get Jesus stressed out, it's horrible. He's not impressed with our stress. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You're like, Jesus, well, I'm going to die. And he's like, I'm sorry, I'm taking a nap in this boat. Right? You're like, we're all going to die. I'm going for a walk on the water. Right? He, 
I, in that moment of letting peace is saying, I choose his peace, what he says, over all of this mm -hmm. insanity. Mm -hmm. I choose his peace and I'm going to let it rule. What does it let rule? It means what it mm -hmm. says goes. What it says is reality. So I feel like we've really practiced in the last couple of years, right? Following the peace and following the grace. How would, how, does it, how would you describe we do it practically? Like you and I just sit down a lot of times, right? And be like, okay, there is a closed door here. There is a closed door here. And there is no way forward here. So what is the next thing, right? Well, Where is the me, peace? Let me back it up a little mm -hmm. bit more practically. A lot of times it shows up like this. Mm -hmm. I come to the breakfast table <laughs> full of everything other than peace. <laughs> <laughs> you know, demonically manifesting. And... Masha discerns there is no peace on me. She chooses not to go to hell with me. Why? Because she recognizes there's no grace there. She stays in her peace. Oh, it could be me, and you are full of peace. And <laughs> Very rarely. Um, <laughs> you all know who's, who's got the superpower. Anyway, but what will happen is she stays in peace, and I can now discern the peace of Jesus on her. And it annoys me to righteousness. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yo, you don't understand yet how bad it is, how bad we're going to die. She's like, no, I'm good. Peace of Jesus. And in that place, allowing her peace to trump my hell. Mm -hmm. This is why we live in community. Mm -hmm. Anybody here during lockdown spent a little too much time all by yourself? And then you came out into relationship with people and realized, oh, dang, oh, dang, my normal is not normal. <laughs> Let the peace of God, Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body. See, if we cannot walk out peace by ourselves. Mm. We will lower it down to the level of our lowest common denominator. Mm. We need it to be challenged by the peace that you carry. Because mm -hmm. some of you all, like, listen, some of you all are so impressed with your bills right now, you need to hang out with Ashley a little bit and let her <laughs> peace offend you. <laughs> She's like, oh, is that, oh, that's not a big deal. <laughs> no, it is a big deal. We're all going to die. <laughs> oh, no, I see Jesus remove way more than that. <laughs> right? We need to be offended by the life and health and wholeness in each other. Mm -hmm. There is not a issue you are facing right now that there's not somebody who has a testimony that slaps a living tar out of it in this room. In this room, yeah. Go find them. But you know what? Most of the time we try to go find people who we can drag down to hell with us. I'm sorry, was that too real? I'm sorry. I want to share my prayer need. Will you pray for me? But what I love about our prayer wall is you all are actually vulnerable to allow each other to mm -hmm. encourage and speak life mm -hmm. and bring breakthrough over each other. That's what it looks like. Therefore, let, what's that word let again? Allow, not hard. Let the word of Christ richly dwell in within you. Just give up. Let his word, his word of peace dominate you. How do you, well, I don't, I don't, how am I going to be able to hear God's voice? I don't know. How could I hear his voice? This is a, this is, I'm making, you, you try. Listen, you have it written down for you. You've got it written down for you. And if not, you can ask, you can phone a friend. But here, anybody here ask for a word of encouragement and refuse to be encouraged by the word of encouragement? <laughs> Why? Because you got to let it. <laughs> it's an inside job. Yeah, Nobody's going to encourage you against your will. <laughs> oh, I can hold out forever. <laughs> I have despair in spades. <laughs> let the word of Christ, let his word of your life de defeat all the others. Richly dwell within you with all wisdom. Wisdom? Where am I going to get wisdom? I'm not very wise. What does James say? If any of you wisdom, what should I do? Because he gives it freely. Because you have set your mind, right, on heavenly things. You are seated in Jesus. Who is wisdom. Who is wisdom. There is no lack. That's what Jesus is beating me over the head in this last season. He's like, everywhere you believe lack, it's a lie. Come on. Everywhere, right? Because I am in Jesus. 
I am seated in heavenly places. There is no lack. Everything that's needed as I just align myself and allow it to flow through me is there. Come on. Right? Come on. Every resource, every wisdom, every creative idea, every business idea, everything I need, every parenting idea, right? Who needs those? Jesus, help us, right? <laughs> so we're, with all wisdom, it's available. So we're supposed to take all that wisdom and teach and admonish one another. Admonishing means go sh suck it up, little camper. That's what admonish means. Oh, no. <laughs> it, no, no. It means, it means I'm going to speak a better word you need to submit to. Mm -hmm. admonish but how do we do it with what some of you do we need a literacy class <laughs> so, <laughs> psalms kims and spiritual songs isn't anybody feel like that was a left turn at albuquerque no seriously again this is so important if you can't oh no i think it makes total sense no it's a left turn at albuquerque why does he say that because songs are a way that we distill wisdom down to a, a sustainable bites anybody here been affected by worship this yeah. morning that your mind was transformed it spoke about a word and you were able to say you came in and all my fountains are in me and they're dry uh, you're right and and we started singing and you're like oh wait i have another source okay fine all my fountains are and literally you were admonished mm -hmm. to belly up to the bar of jesus that's why we sing songs over each other anybody here sent somebody a song mm -hmm. dude that's a great way to beat somebody up with the love of jesus you seem so depressed so i'm just going to give you some of the joy of the lord right? It's, it's saying, I'm going to speak a better word. And music and worship is one of the most succinct, uh, dialed in, uh, condensed ways that we can beat each other up for Jesus with the word of the Lord. It's so important. Anybody here had really messed up thought? So you needed a new thought? Yes. So you flipped, turn on, turn on the music. That's what we do in this. And that's what he's talking about here. If you're not, just let his word come over you. Whatever you do, whatever, whatever. What does it whatever mean? Whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> whatever. Does that mean sometimes? No, ever. That means always, right? Whatever you do, do it all in the name of the Lord. What does that mean? The name means out of him out of his nature out of his power out of his life not on our own whatever we do do it in him in the name of the lord in the walking as his emissary on the earth in the name of the lord jesus what kind of jesus lord, lord. lord over what Everything. what kind of exclusions are there None. what about health is he lord over health yes. is he lord over finance yes. is he lord over your job is he Lord over your marriage, over your family, over all things? Yes. yes. That kind of Lord. Amen. Giving thanks through him to God the Father. Here's the deal. We walk out. We declare. We walk. We allow. We let love in. We let his love uh, uh, be our source. We let peace rule. We let the word of Christ richly dwell in us. We feed upon what he says, right? And then out of that place, whatever we do, <laughs> we reveal his lordship <laughs> in every circumstance. Because we are, we are under his lordship, therefore none of the other stuff matters. It doesn't matter what the end. Though the earth may quake and tremble, though the mountains may fall mm -hmm. into the heart of the sea, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Though the stock market may fall into the bottom of the sea, though Bitcoin could be used for toilet paper, it doesn't matter. Because your heaven, your gold is in heaven. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. Your source is in him. Listen, listen. If you want to find a place to hide all your resource, to be, be uh, recession proof, hide it in Jesus. Hide it in heaven. Hide it in heaven. <laughs> Woo, all right, come Where? on. Um, I feel like as we were talking, uh, all of us are kind of seeing things we need to let go and let drop, just like that hot air balloon, right? We talk about that picture that's uh, weighed down with sandbags. And the more we cut off those sandbags, the higher the air balloon can go, right? And I feel like so uh, all of us have areas and offense and judgment and... 
all of this stuff, unforgiveness, that we just need to um, let go and release and put off, right? Almost like take it off, cut it off. Um, and, and I want to say, some, some folks right now, I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm really, I, I do want to say, I realize I triggered some of y'all's deepest pains today. I don't, I don't want to make light of that. I try to make light of it as anesthesia, mm -hmm. but I don't want to make light of the fact that some of y'all have faced truly horrific things in your life. But I want to challenge you with the truth of the gospel yeah. that until you let that go to him, it will enslave you. And you may feel that that thing is your identity, that that thing that dominates your thoughts and mind and heart, that that terrifying thing that you literally have to work all your time to keep it deep down in there and not coming out. Yeah. But what would life be like if you didn't have to? What would it be like if you didn't have to spend all your effort <laughs> trying to cool yourself off <laughs> from the heat <laughs> right. and you were able to enjoy the life that he gave? Yeah. What if? I want to put it out to you today. Would you dare to risk giving him it all? Yeah. So if the worship team could come, I'm just going to lead us really quickly and just that prayer. Let's just all close our eyes as they're coming up and just, um, just whatever Holy Spirit has been highlighting, whatever, needs, whatever you need to let go, whatever you need to take off. So Jesus, I repent for judging. Just for if you, just if judgment has been brought up. I repent for offense. I forgive. And you can just really quickly just name. You can go deeper later, but just, um, just start to forgiving and releasing. I literally, I, you know, I have to, <laughs> to say that with my family and dog, I have to forgive and release daily. <laughs> she had to forgive so, me for snoring all light night last <laughs> night. So it could be silly things. It could be deep things. Yeah. But as we just forgive and release... Um, just that irritation, that edge, um, they just go away. Um, Jesus, just, just start forgiving and releasing. Jesus, I just I'll let go of the mindset of Jesus. lack. Yeah. I let go of the mindset of judgment. Yeah. I let go of the mindset that everything is, is just falling apart. And Jesus, I put on the love and peace and joy. Just ask Jesus, just ask him to show you what, is, what it is you want, he wants you to put on this morning. What are the things that he wants to flow out of your life? Thank you, Jesus, that wisdom is flowing out of my life to know how to deal with each situation. Thank you, Jesus, that abundance is flowing. Thank you, Jesus, that love is flowing. Patience is flowing out of my life. Um, let's all stand, and as we go into worship, just continue to let go and receive the new, what Jesus has for you this morning.